the hell are you, man? I am an old. Happy New Year, you lazy buggers. Already given up on that New Year, New Me crap, haven't you? Yeah, I know you better than that. Well, also because I've kind of failed on my own resolutions too, actually. But you know what? Fuck that shit. 2022 is hitting us with some awesome content, and I'm here to cover all that good stuff. That's right, baby. Today we're counting down the top 10 upcoming superhero movies of 2022. Let's go. Okay, okay, I know you must be going like, oh, but Morbius isn't a superhero, you jackass. Yeah, I know that, you geniuses, but I'm still include him as well because, well, he's an anti-hero of sorts, I guess, and that still counts. Also, fans must have been left a little disappointed after Sony gave us the news that this new variant is messing shit up, so they had to postpone the release to April. While that may suck, let me remind you that this isn't a full-out horror movie. Also, if you haven't noticed, he's in the MCU. If you don't believe me, look at the trailer and see for yourself. Yep, it looks like Kevin Feige's had enough of the PG-13 crap and wants to give the grown-ups what they've been crying out for for a long time. It'll be interesting to see where he fits into the timeline, but I guess it won't be hard considering, you know, there's a multiverse of madness in effect now. Also, I'm really hoping for Jared Leto not to screw this one up like he did with the Joker in Suicide Squad. That was just, ugh. There's something inside of me. He wants to hunt. If it isn't the Justice League, Superman? Well, we're just a bunch of shelter pets. <gasps> but they're stronger than you think. It's kind of funny that a kid's movie follows after a horrific vampire entry. Anyway, this one's got a lot going for it. You've got Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, John Krasinski, and Keanu Reeves all in one movie about the cute little pets of the DC universe. I mean, yeah, it's not gonna be violent or thrilling or anything, but I sure wanna see the epic romance between The Rock and Hart come to life on the big screen, even if they're just gonna be a bunch of cute dogs going at it. And who doesn't like to watch sweet fluff balls on screen, eh? And yet we've also got Jim and Neo in it, so I'm really looking forward Forward to that too. Come on, I'm sure they're gonna put out a couple of funny references, aren't they? But yeah, if you're out for a violent psychopath who only likes to watch people beat the crap out of each other, then stay away from this one. <laughs> this one's not meant for you. How much did you have to drink? I had two toilet bowls and a bidet. I didn't even know that was a thing, but it's like a dog water fountain. Ah. The Rock makes it two for two on this list. I'm pretty sure we've all been waiting for this announcement ever since that Shazam dude came out. Um, I mean, I don't exactly hate that movie, but I guess it, it was okay at best, wasn't it? Anyway, it took long enough, but we're finally getting his anti-hero counterpart in cinema soon, and the executives really nailed the casting by picking Dwayne freaking Johnson to play the iconic character. The poster reveal and the trailer got some nice visual elements to them as well. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting to see what they do with Black Adam, and I seriously hope they don't mess it up because honestly speaking, the DC Universe doesn't really have a knack for consistency unless they've got Christopher Nolan or James Gunn directing for them. Hey, I mean it is what it is, isn't it? Don't come at me in the comments, you know I'm speaking the truth. But I'm still excited to see the big bold baddie tear us a new one when this one comes out. No one will ever stop me again. What's with overly muscular men dominating this list so far, hey? Jason Momoa is set to return as Arthur Curry in the much-anticipated sequel to the highest-grossing movie of the DCEU. Yep, the first installment made more than Justice League and Batman vs Superman. <laughs> Go figure. I gotta say, the while I did like that one, I definitely didn't think it was worth the moolah, but I guess women really love to see a shirtless Carl Drogo in action. Also, there's an unhealthy amount of hype surrounding Amber Heard's involvement after that whole Johnny Depp fiasco. But yeah, gender politics aside, the movie did make Warner Brothers a shit ton of money, so it was kind of obvious that a sequel was gonna follow. What I'm most excited to see is the involvement of Black Manta. That dude totally kicked ass in the first one, and I'm sure he's gonna have a much bigger a role to play in the Lost Kingdom. The movie doesn't hit theatres till the end of the year, so I'm really hoping it's going to be worth the wait. Aquaman. Who would have thought that Thor would be the one getting his fourth solo movie, especially after the abomination 
that is the dark world. Well, to be fair, Captain America's Civil War could have easily been Iron Man 4 too, I guess. But Tony's dead and Steve is, uh, well, almost, I suppose. That leaves us with the God of Thunder to continue his journey. And from all the recent news in circulation, it looks like Jane Foster is going to take up the mantle from him in this one. It's going to be an interesting film to watch because we've also got the Guardians of the Galaxy involved. And yep, Christian Bale is finally going to be in a Marvel movie. The studio is trying to keep everything under wraps for now, even despite the recent leaks showing us the concept designs and Valkyrie's new look. However, it's only a matter of time before we get the trailer. And I really want to see how Thor loses all those extra pounds, you know, because um, it's not like I gained any holiday weight or anything. <laughs> awesome. Eggs? Breakfast? Mm. No, I'd like a Bloody Mary. Yep, it looks like DC's already hopping on the multiverse bandwagon with The Flash that's due to release towards the end of the year. Now, there's a load of hype around this one, not just because it's the first solo Flash movie, but also because we're mostly going to get different versions of Batman 2. <coughs> it looks like somebody really liked No Way Home. Anyway, regardless of that spidey impact, I'm totally psyched to see different versions of The Dark Knight and can't wait for Barry Allen to finally get his due in the DC universe. But really, he's one of the most popular characters in the comics. I mean, it's so it's criminal that he doesn't already have a film to his name. Listen, I know that this movie's already gone through a lot of developmental hell, but the final product should be good if it's gone through so many changes, right? Oh yes, this one's bundled with expectations. After the awe-inspiring success of the first Black Panther movie, it's going to be really interesting to see what Marvel's going to do with his character, especially after the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman. R.I.P. my man. The fans have been going on and on about recasting T'Challa to keep Boseman's legacy alive, but the main issue this movie's been facing is the whole Letitia Wright controversy. Let's just hope that the creators can overcome these obstacles and give the fans and characters what they truly deserve. Regardless of all that jazz, this Wakanda Forever is still one of the most anticipated releases of the year and it should do big numbers at the box office. Also, with the recent news of the soundtrack including stars like The Weeknd and Doja Cat, I'm totally pumped to hear some fire beats. Let's hope the dawn is bright for us. In my culture, death is not the end. The Spidey hype train doesn't seem to end, and for good reason too. I don't just mean the ridiculous box office collections, by the way. I absolutely loved Into the Spider-Verse, and I'm totally psyched to see how the sequel plays out. We're deep into the multiverse now, so anything is possible, and that's literally the best part. Like, we could see anyone pop up in this movie, apart from the already awesome cast that includes Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man 2099, and the Japanese Spider-Man. The trailer came out just at the right time, and the fact that this concept requires two parts means that we're going to see some awesome world building. There's no telling what stories await us in the Spider-Verse, and if No Way Home was anything to go by, then we're in for a total treat. Man, I'm going to go broke on all the Spidey merch that's going to come out. Greatest threat to our universe is you. Things just got out of hand. Yep, 2022 is giving us some serious Marvel content, and it looks like Disney is going to continue dominating the box office during this decade too. If you're a Spidey fanatic like me, then you already saw the trailer in the post credit scene for No Way Home. But now with the official release, people are just losing it everywhere. Most importantly, this is the first movie to directly involve the MCU web series by including Wanda and Strange Supreme. Yep, it's not just about the memes anymore. Shit's about to get real dark real quick. The trailer actually did a good job of giving us a lot and at the same time not giving too much away. Yeah, sure the multiverse is going to break loose and stuff, but who's the real villain here? Is Strange Supreme really going to be a bad guy? And what's Wanda going to end up doing? There are too many questions that are only going to be answered when we watch the movie in the cinemas. I'm vengeance. Yep, you just knew it had to be Robert Pattinson taking top honours on this list. Batman's always been the most iconic character in comic book history. Yes, even more than Superman. There you go, I said it. Of course, Christian Bale gave us an awesome rendition of the Bat-fearing billionaire, but after the relative disappointment that was Batfleck, 
I'm really just looking forward to seeing Pattinson knock it out of the park. It's not just him though, we're getting Selena Kyle, the Riddler, the Penguin and even a possible Joker appearance. The tone of the trailer somewhat matches Christopher Nolan's legendary trilogy and the fact that this movie is the closest release in 2022 adds a nice little cherry on top of the cake. Here's hoping for the Cape Crusader to grace the screens and capture our hearts. I got you! And there you go. These were the top 10 superhero releases scheduled for 2022. What did you think? Have I missed any out in my entries? Let me know in the comments or chat it out with me on my socials. Like, share and subscribe to keep yourself in the endless loop of movies and TV and hit me up on my Patreon for exclusive content via the link in the description below. Okay then, I'm gonna catch you later.